Here in this lovely crate are old laptop batteries comprised of 18650 cells. When I originally got this crate, it was completely full and weighed 60 pounds. So you'll notice that so far, I've already broken it down to about a quarter of what was already in it. That's because in these two boxes here, and a little bit in that box over there, there are 18650 cells that have already been wrapped. Now, these cells are only wrapped, uh, they aren't tested yet, so we'll get to that part later. So really quickly here, broken apart, this is what one of the individual cells looks like. And you can see that it's actually just 18650 cells. There's six of them usually per battery. And this one, you can actually take apart super easily by just peeling this little cover right off of the pair of pliers. Once you've removed it from the plastic case, this is kind of what you're gonna be left with. So here's like the little BMS control board. These are the actual cells. So we don't really care about the board. So what I do is I just take a pair of these um, side cutters and then just snip all of the uh, nickel strip off them and just throw out the little control board. After that, you'll be left with these uh, individual 18650 cells, and you'll notice that on the bottom and on the top, you have like little spiky bits, and that's actually the leftover part of where the spot welds were for the nickel strips. And quick side note, when you're taking the nickel strip off the top of the cells, make sure to not apply downward pressure on your side cutters, because what can end up happening is you'll be making contact with that nickel strip on the top and you'll be pushing and pushing down on that insulation and actually short out the cell. Since we were recycling these cells, we actually need to get them down to the bare cells themselves to resleeve them. And to do that, all you do is you cut the old shell off. So you'll notice they have just this plastic shell and what you do is you run a knife along the side of them, but you'll notice it leaves a little score mark. But that's not really a problem because it doesn't actually go down deep enough into that metal to leave any sustaining damage. So when you take the sleeves off the cell, you'll notice there's this little white washer at the top. That's your insulator. The entire case of the cell is negative. And then this part at the top is positive. So there's actually just a very small gap in between where the battery has its positive and its negative. So to deal with that, what we actually have is this little insulator piece, and that just sits right on the top of the cell. And then when you put your shrink wrap on, you put that little plastic uh, washer basically on the top, and then that insulates your positive from your negative. So if you were to put it right against something metal, it wouldn't short out. Uh, and that's a big safety concern with these cells is that when you don't have the insulator on the top, if they touch anything metal, they will short out. So you need to be very careful when handling these cells in this raw form like this. So when you actually take the sleeves off these cells, you're going to want to make sure you keep this little insulator. Um, so what I've been doing is I just put them on basically a little pencil and I have a piece of masking tape there to keep it on the bottom. And that's, I found that's a good way to store them because you can just put them all on the pencil like that and then you can reuse them when you resleeve them and that'll save you some money. So what I'm actually going to do now is show you the full process of taking one of these uh, cells from all the way from this state to uh, like this state. So let's start here. On this cell, you'll notice I have tabs both on the bottom and on the top, and it's connected to everything else. And just for now, I'm going to separate just one cell. Uh, so remember earlier how I said you don't want to get your tools um, so it's leveraging uh, on the top of the cell so it'll short it. So what I usually do is if I can pull it apart, that's ideal. So you see I've completely separated that cell, so we'll work with this one. Um, and instead of prying on this part here, I'm just gonna pull up and that'll pull the pieces off it. And then from there, I can just use my side cutter tool to very carefully remove what's left of those little spiky bits on the top there. I'll do the same thing on the bottom. And that's the cell kind of isolated. So now what we want to do is what I talked about earlier. So let's take the knife, put it down. Uh, and you'll notice there's this little bump here. Usually what I do is I go half a centimeter under that bump, just run the knife down the side, and then you can peel off the insulation on the cell, just like that. And then we can keep this little insulator piece. I'll just put it off to the side. Now we have a bare cell. So now, after that, what you want to do is I usually take a piece of sandpaper. Uh, let me check what grit this is. This is 120 grit sandpaper. Although this piece has been heavily used, so it's probably not 120 grit anymore. Um, and I just take this off of the cell. You just want to run it back and forth. You don't have to apply too much pressure, but you want to apply enough pressure to take off the little bits of uh, like nickel strip that are left over. And then on the bottom, do the same thing. Just kind of run it back and forth. I'll get a problem occasionally where I'll get tearing on my sandpaper. 
because the uh, pieces of residue nickel strip are actually sharp and they cut into it. So usually when I start off I apply light pressure and then gradually apply harder pressure uh, so that it um, doesn't do that as much. Uh, so now we've got the contacts all sanded down so they're, they're smooth so you should be able to run your finger across them and not really be able to feel uh, any bumps or any sharp parts uh, and that's important for when you go to spot weld it later. So here in this case I've got heat shrink. Now you'll notice they're all different colors. I actually would not recommend doing it uh, in this fashion uh, where there's all the different colors because I would actually prefer cells with a sleeve that is light so that you can mark on them with a marker for when we test them later you can write down their capacity on the sides. Uh, so like these black sleeves they're no good for that. You can't draw on them with a normal marker. Let's get out a piece of heat shrink here out of the kit. Uh, so these are special pieces of heat shrink made for 18650 cells and I've already sanded down the contacts so you just put the battery in, put the insulator ring on the top and this is the kind of tricky part. So I'll get kind of closer to the camera here so you can maybe see what's going on. I don't know. But you want to leave I would say just a tad more of the insulation at the top than on the bottom. Uh, I have a little heat gun here. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, uh, but essentially I just turn my heat gun onto medium. Do not set it to high or else you'll run into issues where your heat shrink will tear and you'll just get nasty problems. So what I do is I usually start with the insulator side and I just bring it by the side of the heat gun like that very carefully and you'll notice that has secured our ring in place and then I usually, you'll see with my pieces of heat shrink, I'll get like two kind of sharp corners and I'll just run it down the side of the heat gun just like that. Uh, you want to make sure not to hold it under the heat gun um, for two reasons. You can tear the shrink wrap and the other one is you don't want to heat up the cell too much. Uh, so you'll know the shrink wrap on this one is pretty good because it goes almost entirely over the, pla like the plastic insulator on the top and then it also tucks in over the negative terminal on the battery. So that right there is a properly wrapped 18650 cell.